Let's go ahead now and start creating our geometry. To start off this model, I'll create a polygon cube and you would see that it will appear in all my viewports. I'm going to start scaling that up so that it roughly matches the body of the car. Because the geometry may get on the way, you may want to press number four on each viewport so that you can actually have access to the wireframe. When modeling, it's a good idea to start with the biggest object. So we're going to go ahead and start with this particular area here. Remember to use the shortcuts W for moving, E for rotation, and R for scale. Make sure your box is actually lined up correctly in each one of your views. The next step is going to be to start adding subdivisions. In order for me to add subdivisions, I can go into polycube. So I will select subdivision width. I'm going to select about four. Subdivision depth. I'm going to select about six. Using the top view, I can now start using the vertices and scale to match my object. I can click and drag to select vertices and then scale them down slightly. The idea here is that I mimic the actual shape as close as possible. Now go into my side view, go ahead and move these points around so that they resemble the actual shape I'm going for. Now selecting these vertices, I can click on one and shift select the other. Now using the top view, I will shift select the vertices and move them in place. One thing to keep in mind is not to overstretch your polygons and always know when more geometry might be needed. To add more geometry, we can use our edge loop tool. So go into Mesh Tools and select Insert Edge Loop. This way it's going to be better for us to keep our geometry with a good size and not overstretched. Now I'll select the faces at the very top. Make sure that no additional faces in the other side of your object have been selected. And now I can extrude that up. This is to change the orientation of the extruding. So I would probably just click there and then pull that upwards. Actually, I'm going to go back and select all these faces as well. By selecting all these faces, I now I'm going to go ahead and extrude. When you're extruding, just press here so that the extrusion is uniform. Make them a little higher up and then repeat the process of moving around your vertices so they match your reference.
So using the side view, little by little, you can tell that I can go in and mash correctly uh, both sides of the RC card. Um, I'm just gonna click away. So the number three will allow me to get a smooth version of the polish that I just created. So things are looking pretty good. I press one to go back to what I originally have and spacebar, tap on spacebar to get back to your views. I still have a little bit of work to do, especially towards the top. So I'll select these vertices and have them come in slightly. At this point, I'm going to go ahead now and create the shell. This will require for me to delete all the bottom pieces. So I'll go into face, select each one of them. Now we're ready to start adding more geometry and more resolution to our shell. One thing that we can easily do here would be to add more geometry to the center of our card so that we can create this indentation. The first thing I can do is go into Mesh Tools, Offset Edge Loop. And by selecting the middle line, we can now add more geometry by clicking and dragging. Do not worry if your card isn't completely symmetrical at this point. We can always fix that later. The most important thing now is for you to place the points as best as you can within the actual geometry. Place the vertices to your references. In this area, we can also add another edge loop tool. And if we press number three, we can see where we at with our model. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. 